Hi, I'm Hal Aronson, co-founder of WeCare Solar. And in this short video, we're gonna show you how to assemble the WeShare Solar 501 Solar Suitcase. I'm not gonna walk through every single step because you will already be familiar with it from assembling the 601 Solar Suitcase, but I'll go over some key moments that will make for a successful and enjoyable assembly of the 501 Solar Suitcase. So this is your chassis. And the very first thing we're going to do is install the solar receptacle. It's very important that the solar receptacle is oriented so the large lettering is facing toward the top surface of the chassis. You insert it from the back onto these studs here. You push them onto the thread studs until it seats through the hole in the chassis. You can see it like this. You then put on the four small nuts and you tighten them down pretty snug. So the way we tighten the nuts on the solar socket is with the little socket driver that's part of your six-in-one screwdriver. It's just the right size to tighten them. And so you go ahead and screw them on like this. And it's really nice to kind of not fully tighten any single one until you get all of them a little bit snug. That way it goes in in a nice balanced way. And as you see, you can get this nice and snug <clears throat> and the solar socket should sit nice and flat against the inside of the chassis and it will look like this with the letters facing up when you're done. The next step is to put on the actual wires that come off the solar socket before you put in the rest of the components on the board. The wires you need are this yellow wire that has a straight connector and a flag connector. The straight connector of the yellow wire goes on the bottom prong, and you use the flat side here on the inside. That'll make it slide on really nice and easily. And then you also use this white wire that also has a straight connector on it. These are a couple of the few straight connectors in the whole kit, and that one goes here just to the left of the yellow wire. It's very important that you get these wires on the right prongs. And this should fit on nice and tight like this, which is got done by, again, by putting the flat side of the connector on the inside. The next pieces to put on are the solar sockets. Again, the orientation is important. There's a little bit of writing engraved in the socket, and that writing should face toward the top of the chassis. So you can just pop in all four of these, but before you pop them in, you want to put on the covers. The covers are a little bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. And the key to the cover, after you slide it on, is to make sure that it really seats flat against the flange here. And I just use my thumbnail. Some people might want to use the blade or the screwdriver, but I just work it around till it's nice and flat, and you do this on all four pieces, and then you put them in. So as you see from this, all the embossed writing is toward the top. On the bottom receptacles, the covers are facing down. On the top receptacles, the covers are facing up. Then I'm gonna turn it to its back, and I'm gonna put on all of these plastic nuts. And if you get it right, these go on really nicely. If you, just, you can just get them to, um, to spin. And then for the end, you really want to kind of get it nice and snug. And one trick for getting it snug is just to take a screwdriver and kind of give it a bit of a push like that. After putting in the 12 volt receptacles, we're going to put in the expansion port. And the blue wire and the white wire in the expansion port should um, face the bottom of the solar suitcase. It goes into this hole here and you push it in from inside of the chassis with the wires facing down to this side. So I'll go ahead and do that. It takes a little bit of force, but then it will snap into place. And once you snap it in place, you should be able to give it a tug and it should be nice and firm. It's got a couple of pieces that lock it in in the front and then some keepers that hold it from going 
all the way through out here. So this is nicely installed. And while you're there, you might as well install the pop-up breaker, which protects that circuit. And that goes in through this hole. And you want to work it so it really clicks into place. If you note, um, the, the letters 5A are oriented so it's facing uh, to the top like other letters. Next, we're going to install the battery socket. And the battery socket installs in much the same way as the expansion port socket. It gets pushed in from the underside of the chassis. And the red wire is going to be aiming toward the top of the chassis and the white wire toward the bottom. So you feed it in from the bottom and you push it in until it clicks into place. And this is also the same piece you installed in the 601 as well. So there it is. And after we install the sockets, we're going to now put in all the breakers. Um, we can start with the main breaker. And remember, when you put in the circuit breakers, you want the line to be facing up. And if they're sideways, the line to be facing to the right. Line means on and the O means off. So I pop this in with the line facing toward the top. The two white breakers are for the lights, so they go to the top. And you just push them in and they snap into place. It's a very satisfying sound. Okay, and then there's finally the load breaker. Again, with the line facing to the right, because to the right means on in our culture. And now you have all the main parts populating the board, and all we need to do is add the charge controller. So flip the board over, the chassis over, um, drop the charge controller into place, and you're gonna secure the charge controller with these longer screws. Put in the top screws first, So then we're going to put on the bottom two screws, but before we put them on, we're going to thread a zip tie on, and this is going to be used later for wire management. It'll make sense to you um, further on in the process. And so I'm going to put those two in here now, and then I'm going to get this pretty firm. You don't have to make this super tight, but you want it to be snug. And you can fully tighten it up later after the whole wiring is done. So the key thing to remember when you wire the solar suitcase is that when you use these slip-on connectors, you want to make sure that the prong that you're sliding it over actually goes in the middle of the metal and not between the plastic and the metal. And there's actually a little notch cut into this that's actually a window to show you that it's properly aligned. Now I'm just going to slowly move my way through the, through the wiring. First I'm going to complete the solar circuit putting this one on the solar half of the breaker and this yellow one here. This one's gonna to go to the charge controller eventually. Then this is the battery. It goes onto this part of the battery side of the breaker and the other red wire is gonna complete the path to the charge controller. So that's done. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start getting ready for the loads. So this wire is going to bring the power from the charge controller over to this side, but I'll just go ahead and get this going. Um, let's do the negatives first. This is going to go on the negative side of each socket. One, two. You'll notice that the, the negatives are on the prong that's toward the edge of the socket. And if you properly put in the orientation on the socket, those would all be on the right looking down at it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring a wire from the charge controller, the, the load negative over to here, and we're gonna join all the negatives together. It's also a negative coming from the expansion port. Be sure to pull the insulation off of all the wires so you're gonna get good electrical connection. And this wire is going to bring um, the electricity from the charge controller over to energize those sockets. 
So I used a smaller slotted screwdriver. I'd go to load negative. I loosen the screw. Don't get the screw all the way out. Just get it to a little bit below the plastic housing. Turn it over. Slide it into the charge controller. And tighten it down. Basically, I have this five position Wago. I'm going to start by putting the negatives from all the wires toward the top of the control board into this way go. Two. It's kind of nice to do it in order. Three. If they're a little bit splayed, just give them a twist so they slide in nicely and cleanly. This should go all the way in. And you can give each wire a tug when you put it in. And finally, this is the negative wire from the charge controller, load negative. Put that in, and that is what connects it to the system. And now to get these last two, we're gonna to need to make a jumper with this short piece of strip white wire. Again, pull off the insulating pieces. Pop this in here, and then this carries it over to a three connected, or three position Wago. And from this three position Wago, you can capture these last two negative wires. Okay, now all the negative load sockets have been wired. And now we'll do the positive side of the circuit. Now, on these um, wires that go from the charge controller, one end is just stranded, the other end is soldered. It's the soldered end that lands at the charge controller. And so now we'll put this blue load positive wire into the charge controller. So I push it in. I've already loosened the screw and now I'll tighten it down. And these can be done really tight. You can really crank these down. Don't be Superman, but be strong when you do this. And now we'll wire up all the load positives. So this one is going to power or energize um, the expansion port. So I'll put this one on this breaker. So then these blue wires with the flags are going to feed the circuit breakers, which will then feed the sockets. So you put these onto this end of each of the breakers. One. And you can support the breakers you put it on, and that's a good idea to uh, protect it. Okay, so we got these three. And then it's going to go from this breaker and feed these two. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on also. Now watch the magic. So we're going to start with a five pin Wago. This time I'll just open it all up to show you another approach. And I'll try to work from one side to the next to make for neat looking wiring and we'll start at the top. So we put in blue wire, positive wire one. Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna be feeding this guy. So positive wire two. And then this is the wire that's gonna feed the breaker, which will then go into the um, expansion port. So positive wire three. And then we're gonna bring in the wire from the charge controller, which actually feeds this whole load circuit. Call that positive wire four. And then we wanna bring the electricity to this breaker, which will then feed these two sockets down here. So that's positive wire five. Okay, so this way goes now all wired. I'm pulling on to test it. Now what happens is that from here, we're gonna bring another 
flag connect to a blue wire, pull off the insulation. So when you turn on this switch breaker, it'll feed this three slot Wago. And then we'll connect this three slot Wago with the positives that connect to these two uh, sockets. So by turning on this switch, you're energizing both of these sockets here. Again, I pull off the insulation. And we're almost complete. The last thing we need to do is make sure that the expansion port gets power. So this blue flag connector connects to the other side of this pop-up breaker. And I'm gonna support this breaker with my hand as I push on the prong. And now all the load circuits are wired. Okay, my trusty assistant pointed out that once we feed the breaker switch, we need to get it to the socket. So I left that out, but I'm gonna come back now and take care of that slight omission. There's always room for redemption in this world, even when you're dealing with bright, young engineering interns who always keep us old guys on our toes. There, now the load circuit is complete. Power comes in, goes through these switches, and makes it to the sockets and to the pop-up breaker. And now I can complete the rest of the wiring. So, yellows for solar. And this is solar negative, goes through here. So we've now wired all of our, brought all our wires that need to go into the charge controller in there. There's the solar positive, solar negative, battery positive going here, battery negative going here, and then there's load positive and load negative. Make sure these uh, terminals are all tight, and then when you're done, Give a little pull to make sure they're really seated in there. And then we just don't want to leave the wires sloppy where they can get damaged, but we want to manage them. And that's where these zip ties come in. And you just take all these loose wires and you bring them together. And this is going to be something your students will really probably enjoy. And I kind of, I like to swing the zip ties so it's really out of the battery cavity hole. You go around and you feed it through the slot in the zip tie. If you put a little bend in the zip tie, it makes it a lot easier to feed it on into that slot. See, I fed it in there through there, and then I'm just gonna pull it pretty close. And then what I'm gonna do is take the wires and push them up out of the way of that cavity, and then I'm gonna pull it nice and tight and then when I tighten the screw, pay no attention. It might even swing it around a little bit. See that, that pulled it a little bit over there. And then you can clip this off with your snippers and do the same for the low wires going on this side. You can see now that the zip ties have held the wire out of harm's way, and then I make sure that it's nice and tight, okay? And that, my dear friends and colleagues, is the completed solar suitcase, socket oriented up, switches oriented so that on is up or to the right, screws tight, sockets oriented facing upward with the little lettering this way and you're good to go thank you